This is Engineer Faisal Ijaz. Hope you will be fine. In this channel, I prepared detailed lectures for chemical engineers and also for associate engineers. In this channel, you will find playlists of different engineering subjects which will help you in your study, in your interviews and also during your professional industrial life. So subscribe my channel for more videos. This is Engineer Faisal Ijaz. Hope you will be fine. In this video, I will discuss floating head heat exchanger. Before this video, I discuss a very interesting topic for you people, which was heat exchangers for solids. Now we proceed towards the important service provided by floating head heat exchangers. So you will take an idea that these floating head heat exchangers are how much beneficial for us. So, according to first point, floating head heat exchangers are used where the temperature difference between the shell and tube bundle is high. So, uh, if we take an example, uh, these types of heat exchangers are mostly used in petroleum refineries. According to second point, these types of uh, heat exchangers are used where these resist the thermal stresses and fatigue. These are also used where high thermal efficiencies are required and uh, at fourth these are used where we deal cross severe streams and also used where high temperature and high pressure applications are exist. You know well about different types of heat exchangers but the floating head heat exchanger is still at a leading position due to its versatile applications. So their leading position is due to some qualities. The first one is the entire tube bundle is removable. It's mean we can clean it properly. So its maintenance is easy and inexpensive. So it's a longer life equipment, but its operating cost is higher. You know well about different types of heat exchangers which have tube bundles. So these tubes are fitted in tube sheets from both ends. So after that assembly is fitted into a shell. In some times both ends are fixed within the shell but in this type only one end of the assembly is fixed and other is movable to resist thermal stresses. Here you can see the two points related to a floating head name. The one end of the tube plate attached to the shell while the other is free and that free end is named floating end. So due to this word we get the name of that heat exchanger which is floating head. If you people are still confused, then concentrate on this diagram. This is a cap which will cover only the second unfixed end of the tube assembly. So when we will join this cap with this shell only, then still that uh, tube assembly may be movable. So uh, that assembly can back and forth motion after getting high temperature stresses so we will uh, called this end is a floating end due to its motion in this diagram you can see the first step of construction of floating head heat exchanger in which both ends have a circular plates of yellow and white color also the long tubes are fitted in these both circular plates so these circular plates are called tube sheets the second thing here are circular half plates of blue and black color so these are called baffles which are fitted in these tubes at some distances so the purpose of their installation is to improve the rate of heat transfer 
here you can see in the next diagram all the previous assembly is fitted in a shell so uh, in this end we are trying to prepare the floating head and uh, here blue circle is a gasket which is used to avoid leakage so uh, in the next uh, diagram you can see a circular plate but in a curved shape which will fit on these both the tubes and uh, over the gasket now it's uh, fitted and uh, in the next section you can see it is bolted but not with the shell so it's freely to move uh, back and forth motion during high temperature stresses now do not confuse yourself that how half of the liquid will turn itself to backward direction so through this gasket you can understand from first half the liquid will come here and through the other half it will turn to backward direction so moreover you can understand this point when i will discuss the other side of that heat exchanger through this diagram you can understand the scheme of shell side fluid and tube side fluid so both uh, have uh, opposite uh, inlet and outlet uh, so here you can see the inlet point of shell side fluid and uh, also it will pass through different baffles and it will exit from this point so it will be a shell side fluid so here you can see its inlet of uh, tube side fluid and a half set of uh, these tubes will receive that fluid and uh, through uh, this point uh, it will uh, turn back to the other half set of uh, tubes and uh, through this point it will go to exit so i was talking about uh, uh, with the help of uh, gasket the division of uh, that fluid and tubes now i will enlist the types of uh, floating head heat exchanger the first one is a flint back ring type the second one is pull through bundle type the third one is outside packed lantern ring type and the fourth one is outside packed stuffing box type this is a diagram of pull through float heat exchanger it's also called t type as due to its design this is a diagram of split back ring floating heat exchanger and it is also called s type heat exchanger due to its design this is a diagram of outside packed stuffing box and uh, it's also called p type heat exchanger due to its design this is a diagram of outside packed stuffing box type heat exchanger it's also called p type heat exchanger due to its design